The great debate over legalizing recreational marijuana has hit Arizona. An Arizona lawmaker announced plans this week to introduce a bill this legislative session that begins Monday. If indeed it becomes law, people 21 and older can possess up to an ounce of marijuana and no more than five plants. This bill would also include an excise tax and establish regulations. So here to talk about legalizing recreational marijuana in Arizona is the man planning on introducing the bill, Assistant House Minority Leader from Phoenix, Ruben Gallego. Ruben, thank you very much for being here. And Attorney General Tom Horn uh, is here as well. To uh, We're going to go count point, counterpoint. How's that sound, guys? <laughs> well, uh, first off, um, I want to just jump right into this and uh, give you guys as much time. Uh, first off, Mr. Gallego, what are the benefits of legalizing recreational marijuana? Well, the biggest benefit is taking marijuana outside the black market. Right now, marijuana is sold um, almost everywhere. Uh, we all know family members, friends, and it's actually easier for kids to get marijuana than it is than to, to get alcohol. What we hope to do is create um, a system, a regulated system, much like marijuana, where people will go to a store, show their ID, pay taxes, we know who is growing this and we know who is selling this all the way through so that way it is taken out of the black market and it's basically regulated and used as alcohol is. And Mr. Geigo, you are introducing this bill this week, is that accurate? It should be done this week. I'm still trying to round up as many uh, sponsors as possible. Mr. Horn, let's talk about the dangers with uh, his plan. Well, the, the biggest danger is that uh, use will increase. Uh, we, it's disputed how much it will increase, but we know for sure that if you legalize it, the use will increase. And my opposition stems from my years in education. You know, I served 24 years on a school board, uh, four years in the legislature, chairman of the Academic Accountability Committee, and then eight years as superintendent of public instruction. And I know uh, many cases where kids, when they get on marijuana, they lose their ambition, their grades go down, you know, everything is cool, man, why worry about the future? <laughs> and uh, it happens in, in business also. There's, there are studies that show increase in absenteeism, decrease in uh, ambition and, and, and conscientiousness. Um, and it could have a bad effect on society. And at a minimum, it's being experimented now, to, experimented now in Colorado and Washington. Right. We ought to wait and see what are the effects in those states before we consider doing it here. It's, it's nice to hear both of you talk about safety and security mm -hmm. at the same time and to have two politicians sitting next to each other that aren't yelling at each other. So thank you. you <laughs> no touched it once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Horn, you touched on it right We're there. We're very about, friendly, uh, Ruben and I. <laughs> about uh, how, um, how Colorado did this. Uh, Mr. Gallego, I want to ask you, why not just wait and see how this uh, works in Colorado? It, it, it's actually a really good point. The reason you don't want to wait is because uh, if we do not get away by 2016, there will be a ballot initiative. And under a ballot initiative proposition, we're actually going to get hamstrung by how much we can do. There's a lot of X factors to this, right? This law is not going to be imperfectly implemented um, if we go through a ballot initiative. If we pass it as a legislature, we will actually have more flexibility to respond to a lot of things that, that are going to come up. And just, just like with a lot of things that have come up with medical marijuana, we've been hamstrung with a lot of the issues and, and issues good and bad that have come with medical marijuana because we have to vote at a supermajority level mm -hmm. to pass that uh, good legislation to fix that law. And we, are not, we don't have that ability right now because a small uh, troika of people can basically, um, can basically hold hostage all the legislation. Mr. Horn, as the state's top cop, uh, is there a, um, a concern with uh, crime? Uh, tied to recreational marijuana. Not that there's any study out. I, I don't know if there is, quite frankly, but is there any information that you may have? Well, the studies show um, that uh, use of marijuana can be very bad for your driving. It's the second most common substance in the blood after alcohol for serious accidents. Um, and, and I think it you would have an increase in crime because of the increase in use of marijuana mm -hmm. if you legalize it. And I'm especially concerned, obviously, about the effect on kids because if it's legalized, even though you say we won't sell it to kids, it's much more prevalent, it's much more available. In fact, in Colorado, they just had a case of a girl, a toddler, and her mother noticed that she was hardly able to walk and she was lethargic. It turned out she'd eaten some brownies that had marijuana in them. Um, and so uh, there are a lot of dangers and I think, I think we have good experiments in Colorado and Washington. Let's see how those turn out. What is the effect on society? Maybe my fears are, are exaggerated and maybe it won't cause problems, but maybe it will cause problems. And we should know that before we act in Arizona. We only have a minute and 30 left. Uh, Mr. Geigo, yeah. you're about to say something to his well, point. Well, you know, again, back to the issue of impairment. Um, just because we legalize for use of marijuana does not mean you are allowed to drive uh, impaired, no matter what. You're not allowed to drive impaired if you're too sleepy. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you do that and you're being responsible, you should be treated uh, judiciously by the law. 
in terms of, again, back to our high schoolers uh, and people just in general smoking marijuana that should not be, this will be strictly regulated above the age of 21 and only above the age of 21. And anybody that abuses this, whether they hand it or sell it to somebody that gender, mm -hmm. should also have the book thrown at them, which should actually happen now, too. So what we're actually trying to do is at least diminish the, the, the areas that we can affect, which is people above the age of 21. Okay, uh, I want this has been really interesting and a hot topic on our Facebook page, the ABC 15 Facebook page. Uh, real quick, there's a there's a report out that 70 million dollars in tax revenue could be generated out of Colorado. So this coming from one of our uh, uh, viewers here, Monica writes, "Where would the tax money go?" Very quickly, Mr. Uh, Gallego. Uh, my plan is for it to go into the general funds so we could use uh, most of that going to education, but a portion of it actually going to drug, drug rehabilitation. One of the nice things about us actually controlling instead of going to the legislature, we can also designate where that money goes. Okay, got uh, 20 seconds left. Let's go to the other Facebook p question. This is for you, Mr. Horn. How would it affect getting a job? Uh, well, hopefully employers have the right to test people. and be sure. If they don't want to hire somebody who's going to be high on marijuana, they ought to have a right to, to be able to test and exclude them. Of course, I don't know uh, what the law, uh, if it's yeah. passed, would provide. Okay. Uh, as Attorney General, I have to pass whatever laws the legislature uh, passes I have to enforce, but uh, hopefully employers should have the choice to, n to be able to not hire people who are going to be high on marijuana. Stay tuned is what we like to say in this business. Uh, Mr. Gallego, Mr. Horn, wonderful having you both here. Thanks Thank for watching.